Well, hello everybody and welcome back to G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And uh, yeah, we're looking at the outside thermometer here and this is in the shade. This is on the porch in the shade. So uh, yeah, I got a little warm today and I decided to uh, uh, take it easy and uh, relax and utilize my outdoor shower and cool off and things like that. But um, I did want to get a uh, video going t uh, today because I made some promises to some of my subscribers and uh, they're going to be uh, going off grid themselves pretty soon and they need some information on off grid electricity. So here we are, off grid ele electricity, uh, uh, let's call it 102 because we're moving off of solar now and we're going to go on to PMAs and PMGs, or what uh, you might otherwise know as uh, wind turbines. My uh, electric room is locked, so we're not going to go in there. And I'm going to come over here on the porch because I'm just going to basically talk to you about it. And uh, I don't want to uh, run this one too long. I won't bore you. Uh, I've been over a lot of this stuff before in other videos, but uh, let's put it all together in one so that uh, those people that need it uh, can uh, either keep this video or save it on their uh, YouTube channels and l refer to it later and so forth and so on. So here we go. First of all, um, I was asked also about the, uh, the different styles of uh, uh, wind turbines and... Uh, let me say say this about the different styles. It really makes no difference what style you go with. The style is not the important part. The important part is the ratings and efficiency of that uh, turbine or PMA or PMG, whichever you're going to go with. Now, I keep saying PMA, PMG, and I've said this before. I explain what those mean. PMA is permanent magnet alternator. It's just like a car alternator, and it, except it has permanent magnets inside of it instead of electromagnetic fields or electromagnets. And uh, the permanent magnets, are, uh, depending on how many are actually in the PMA, uh, determine how uh, efficient it is. So uh, my... PMA is a KT5, and uh, that is a very good uh, PMA for high output. Now, here's the important part. Whether you get a PMA or a PMG, which is a permanent alt magnet generator, the difference is an alternator has three wires, and it doesn't matter which sequence you hook those wires up. They have to go through a rectifier that changes the AC uh, current to DC current. So you have to buy a rectifier separate with a, um, a PMA. With a PMG, the gen permanent magnet generator, you have two wires coming out of it, a positive and a negative, just like a generator on ca a car would be. And uh, whether you get a 12 volt, 24 volt, whatever, you, you can order them for the voltage that you're going to be used for your battery bank. I use all 12 volt. Um, the uh, permanent magnet generator, or PMG, d doesn't need a rectifier. It, it, the two wires come down and go directly to your battery banks. Now you want to put the positive wire coming from the uh, uh, PMG d directly to the furthest positive connection on your battery bank and go to the opposite end of the battery bank to the last battery and connect the negative wire to the negative pole of the battery there. That way you're using the whole battery bank um, as a, uh, a medium in between the power that's coming in and you're not just pumping it all into one battery and letting it try to uh, feed itself out from there. Okay, so that's important. Uh, PMGs are more efficient. The only difference is, is that you're going to use heavier wire. PMAs 
you can get away with uh, skinnier wire, which is a saving. If you ever gone by uh, copper wire nowadays, you'll know that uh, copper wire is not cheap. So if you can get skinnier wire using a PMA, that saves you money. But if you can afford the money, and I say try to afford it, save up. If you've got time before you get into this situation, save up and buy yourself the PMG and the higher um, heavier gauge wire that you're going to need to run it. And you can get that information uh, online of what size wire you will need for what length of run you're going to have. All right. <clears throat> the thing is, is that the PMGs are a lot more efficient because you're not changing AC uh, current to DC current before you put it into your batteries. You're producing DC current and you're putting DC directly into your battery banks. That's the most efficient way to go. All right. PMGs, PMA ratings. And uh, you see them all the time. They advertise 550 watts, uh, 700 watts. 600 watts, 300 watts. All right, when you're talking about a wind turbine or a PMA or a PMG, that rating is the maximum rating that that unit will put out in the highest wind that it is capable of withstanding before the blades on that unit stall. Just like an airplane, your blades can only go so fast before they stall, which means you're not going to get any more power out of them. They can only go to that speed, and that's as fast as you'll ever go. Well, that's what turbines or wind, uh, wind turbines, PMAs and PMGs do. The fan blades determine how fast that thing is going to go and what its maximum output is going to be. And the rating they give you is that maximum output. You're not going to get that all the time. You'll very seldom get that unless you're living in a hurricane area. And then I don't think you really want a turbine up there. All right. So don't be fooled by um, the, the smaller ones being cheaper and they're going to give you 500 watts and I'm going to, that's equal to five solar panels. No, it's not. If you're lucky, you might be equal to three quarters of one solar panel in your standard winds with that unit. It's going to be a waste of your time and a waste of your money. Do like I did. Get rid of that small um, wind turbine. Get up to a bigger unit like I did. I went to the KT5. It's rated for 1,685 watts. Now, that remember, that's its maximum rating. I'm not going to see that all the time. I'll probably never see that. That has to be in a 90 degree or 90 mile per hour wind, which is the maximum wind um, that that unit will withstand before the blades stall. Okay, they can't they can't produce any faster. So I have to get 90 mile an hour winds to get 1,685 watts. Forget it. You'll never see it. It'll never happen. And if it does, it's going to blow your turbine down. Next, blow, blowing the turbine down. Your, your mast, your tower that's going to hold your turbine, your, your PMA or your PMG. The winds are very powerful. And it looks like it's not going to be a big deal because the blades turn. So you're not going to be having that much wind resistance. Yes, you are. I had mine with a four foot deep concrete base on it that had eight bags of, of 60 pound bags of concrete. So looking at 480 pounds a concrete base on a 21 foot pole and uh, a 60 mile an hour wind blew that over. Okay, so you've got to, if you're going to use a tower, it's got to be um, anchored properly and figure that uh, you want to set it up so that if you hook your car to it with a rope to the top of the thing and you start pulling on it with your car it'll bend the mass before it um, tips the, the mass over out of the ground. So you want about um, 1,200 to 2,000 pounds of um, pressure on, available on that unit before it tears it over. That's very important. So 
In order to do that, you can go with a 480-pound um, base on it, but you have to put guy wires up. And even if you don't have to put guy wires up, put them up anyway. You never know when you're going to get that uh, weird windstorm come through that's going to blow your stuff over and damage your equipment. So you want to definitely put guy wires on. And you can go to Harbor Freight and you can buy 100 feet of 3 16th cable, which makes great guy wires. And 100 feet of it, that should make you 3 33 and a, th a third foot uh, guy wires, which is plenty long for guy wires. All right. And uh, we'll go over those another time when I get over to the uh, turbine. It's uh, it got a breeze there and I don't have my windproof mic and I don't want to get drowned out. All right, so we've covered that uh, part. Now, if you're thinking about getting a wind turbine, a PMA or a PMG for your new off-grid or homesteading adventure, first of all, check the area you're going to be in. Make sure the winds are available. If your average wind is only 7 miles per hour, you're not going to need a PMA or a PMG. It's, it's a waste of your money. You're not going to make the power you need with it. Okay. Now, if you have a stream running through your property, instead of a, um, a wind turbine, go with a water turbine. That's right. Water turbines can generate a lot of electricity 24-7 as long as water is flowing through a stream. So... Research that. That might be an option for you. Um, also, if you're going to buy the, the wind turbines or the PMAs or PMGs, check their capabilities and their outputs. Check the lowest wind that they start producing in. And uh, remember, if they're, if they're rating it at 500 watts, then the stall speed on that thing is, say, 60 mile per hour winds. Then at 30 miles per hour, you're going to make 250 watts. And you're not going to see 30 mile an hour winds. Those are rare. I, I get them every now and then out here, but I'm in the 20 mile an hour wind range. And the uh, 1680 watt unit will give me anywhere from two to 400, 500 um, watts in that speed. So uh, it's adequate for what I'm doing. But if I only had a 500 watt um, turbine up there, I wouldn't be getting crap out of it. It wouldn't be even be worth my time. It'd be it'd be a, a nice uh, thing to stare at and chase birds, okay? So remember that stuff. Now, if you're going to put up a, a, a single pole mast, you're thinking about using a 2-inch base mast, using a bell reducer on it, and then threading in a inch and a half um, mast uh, pipe above that just for the last 6 feet or so. Okay, if you do that, don't use a threaded connection. You've got to weld it. You know, it's got to be a welded connection. It will break at the threaded connection. Threaded pipe is not um, strong. Where the threads are, it's very weak. You've cut more than halfway through the pipe to make the threads. So that's on Schedule 40 pipe. So you want to, if you're going to be able to uh, get it, go with Schedule 80 pipe and go with a single pipe straight up. Put it in a concrete base as deep as you can put it and as wide two foot by two foot or three foot by three foot wide and then put guy wires and then put the guy wires in on a spring pole. I'll show you what mine look like or you can look back on a, uh, old videos of mine. Put them on spring poles with a concrete anchor on the pole and a concrete anchor on another um, stretch wire that you use for adjustments. All right. I think we've covered about everything on that. Um, just remember the difference between your PMGs and PMAs are going to be your wire size and your costs. But the PMGs are more efficient than a PMA. And when my PMA becomes uh, obsolete and not useful, I will go to a PMG and I'll get rid of the rectifier. I'll go directly to my battery banks. It's more efficient and uh, you'll love it. Now, oh yeah, well, before I forget, if you use either one, if you're using a wind turbine, you must have a dump load system set up on your battery banks. Okay, you, you must 
have that dump load system. If you don't, and you hit a bunch of windy days, you'll blow up your battery banks. And you can't just disconnect it with a cutoff switch. If you disconnect it, you'll burn the stator out on your system, uh, on your PMA or your wind turbine. They're not, they, they can't free run. They've got, if they're running, they gotta be under load, all right? So remember that. And uh, any questions uh, further down the line, do you wanna ask me anything? Put them down at the bottom in the comment section. I'll be glad to answer them for you or even do a video on them. And I'm glad that you guys like just sitting here watching the scenery uh, while I'm talking. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's about all I'm going to uh, have for today. Don't forget questions down in the comment section. Comments down in the comment section. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to click subs uh, or share and say, share this with friends and family and anybody else you know might be going off grid. Uh, also, um, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have subscribed already, thank you. Welcome aboard. G-Bear signing off.